All right, we're back. Uh, we're chapter seven, consumer producer surplus. We have done first six problems on consumer surplus. What happens in price changes? What happens to consumer surplus, etc. Now we're going to flip. Oh no, I think I've got one more on consumer surplus. Then we'll go to producer surplus. And this is just another angle at the same problem. We've done it a tabular question, we've done a graph with a continuous demand curve, and now we're going to go back to a form of tabular kind of calculations, but just so you keep buying into this idea of difference between price in the market and the willingness to pay of the consumer. So, I'm on problem 7, it says refer to 7.4, here's figure 7.4, if the price of the good is $6, then consumer surplus is. The price of the good is $6, okay? So, I have to put a price here of $6. And what I've drawn here is that one person is willing, when the price is eight, all right, this, with this, the quantity consumed is four units, okay? When price falls to, excuse me, when price rises to $12, the number of units sold is only three. When price rises to $16, the number of units sold is two. And when price rises to $24, the number of units sold is one, okay? All right, so consumer surplus. So, what at $6, and I should draw it over here so you get to see a little bit. I'll draw a broken line here for $6. Okay, so when the price is $6, we see that four units are going to consume because this last person was willing to pay uh, $8 for this fourth unit. So we had four units sold because the willingness to pay of the fourth person was $8. So what's the difference? It's this right here. Right. There it is right there. That's the difference between $8 and $6 for this, the unit from 3 to 4. So that's $2 of consumer surplus. How much surplus is there on the third unit? Well, we were willing to pay $12 to get the third unit. So this area becomes the consumer surplus for the third unit. On the second unit, again right here becomes... Person was willing to pay two dollars, only had to pay six, so this becomes the consumer surplus on the second unit sold. The last, the first unit, someone was willing to pay twenty-four dollars for that unit, only had to pay six. Like my diagrams, all right. So the spotted area is now our consumer surplus. So how much is that? Well, this is two dollars, so that's plus two. This is the difference between 12 and 6, so that's plus $6. This is the difference between 16 and 6, so that's plus $10. And this is the difference between 6 and 24, which is plus $18. So 18 plus 10 is 28, plus 6 is 34, plus 2 is 36. Answer is $36 equals consumer surplus in this particular problem. All right, so you could go right to it. There it is, it's number D, the $36, and that's how you compute it, all right? So again, we've attacked the consumer surplus from three directions. A table, a kind of tabular or this graph, a discrete graph showing individuals, and then if you had millions of individuals, you can see that the demand curve starts to get really smooth, and we'd have lots of individuals here, and the consumer surplus would be the area in a continuous sense between the price in the market and how much everybody in this demand curve is willing to, willing to pay. And that's it. That's consumer surplus. So now we're going to turn to producer surplus. I have to draw a new diagram, but we'll come back in a minute, and we'll go on to problem number 8, 9, 10 for producer surplus. Thanks.